स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया वेलकम बैक टू एनपी टेल द नेशनल प्रोग्राम ऑन टेक्नोलॉजी एनहेंस लर्निंग टूडे वी आर इन लेक्चर नाइन इन द लास्ट मॉड्यूल एंड our lecture today is entitled critiquing cultural studies as always let us do a recap of what we did in the last lecture in the last lecture we talked about cultural policy and one of the first uh, points that we um, dwelt upon was the distinction between two types of intellectuals as was given to us by the italian marxist antonio gramsci according to gramsci we saw that intellectuals may be divided into two types the traditional intellectuals and the organic intellectuals further we went on to define cultural policy as the regulation management and administration of all cultural products artifacts and practices and we found that there were certain institutions that produced and governed the form and content of cultural products so even which meant that even if we uh, practiced culture even if we held certain cultural forms and artifacts and products as holding value something that things that need to be you know to be uh, put forward into the public into the public arena public sphere we found that uh, there was always an element and many would say a necessary element of control of the production and distribution of cultural goods and forms so we then found that the these bodies okay are uh, common to all cultures to all nations and these sort of you know um the this sort of bodies that control the production and distribution of cultural forms may be art and culture councils museums government departments that dealt with culture educational institutions media industries and corporations and advertising and agencies then we found um that barker in his book cultural studies associates these bodies and councils and different uh, agencies so to speak with power and says that these are the agencies that have the power to name okay the power to create official versions right to deem something as common sensical and others as uh, well almost ridiculous and finally they have the power to legitimize okay they have the power to legitimize all cultural products and forms that were to be channelized and given to the public right so the call uh, therefore we saw to academicians was this that academicians should not remain at the level of discourse at the level of you know uh, abstractions but also should um, you know uh, should plunge themselves okay into policy making into helping these various um, you know wings of government or other councils uh, even ngos okay in a bid to sort of regulate also take part in the regulation of what may be considered official what may be considered legitimate and what may be considered you know culturally sensitive and apt and uh, all in in encompassing okay so we also found that pragmatism as a philosophy as a school of thought in cultural studies is most suited okay as far as cultural policy is concerned or if not more suited is one of the you know um, one of the philosophical schools or orientations in cultural studies that have been pointed 
uh, to by many scholars okay, as one of the better ways of engaging with cultural studies and we found one name that was that of Richard Rorty and we saw that pragmatism as a school okay, is useful as uh, you know as a, a, a sort of a guiding spirit of cultural policy in that it is by nature anti-representational, anti-foundationalist and anti-realist and um, just because they are so, it does not mean that they cannot contribute to social reform. They contribute to social reform um, by understanding you know the anti-foundationalism anti and the provisionality of all knowledge. Okay? So, this was a recap of the last lecture on cultural policy. Fine. So, today the topic of discussion in our um, class is a critique of cultural studies and I would like you to pay close attention to some of the points that are going to be made here. Uh, because if we are honest scholars, okay, if we and particularly in cultural studies I should say, if we believe that our work should get better, if we believe that we, sh that we should not hide or push anything under the carpet, if we believe in intellectual honesty and integrity. And also by the very nature of cultural studies that it uh, itself is a critiquing enterprise, largely a critiquing enterprise both from the point of view of its semiological approach and its political economy approach. We should also put cultural studies to the test, okay, to the critical test. Now, um, we know that cultural studies is known as a belligerent a discipline, it is known as we, as we saw in one of the lectures an insurgent sociology. Okay. Uh, it is known to put everything, every cultural form into test or to, uh, to you know to a test. Now, therefore, it is only logical for us okay, to understand and accept the fact that well, even cultural studies itself should be critiqued, right, if cultural studies is to be honest to itself. Now, when we talk about critique really, it is quite a loaded term. Critique does not mean simply criticism, right. If we, if it meant only criticism, then we do not need a word like critique. As you know, really there is nothing called pure synonymy in language. If there is a second word, it means that the next word has a shade of meaning that is different from the previous word. Anyhow, critique may therefore be understood as a of course, the criticism there is always you know an element of being um, you know uh, being suspicious being uh, you know being a little uh, sort of you know querying about an area and at the same time critique uh, also means to lay bare the presumptions or to lay bare the you know the central axioms and to put to scrutiny right the central axioms and central beliefs and premises, the postulates of any area of study. Okay? So, as we understood critique then has both the element of uh, you know querying and the element uh, querying almost you know to, so that you can sort of point to the negative aspects of uh, a domain and at the same time sort of uncovering right. Um, the the premises and axioms of any domain, right? So this it, this is what we are also going to do today in our lecture, and um, what I have done is I have tried to uh, bring some of the very sharp also some of the very sharp criticisms of cultural studies. Uh, it's on its methodology, on its um, the criticism of its um, you know uh, of many of its aspects that do not seem okay, to be quite right with some critics. Right? So, anyway let us see what this critique of cultural studies in the sense of both uncovering its postulates and a criticism in the sense of querying uh, you know very sharply some of its central tenets um, are concerned. Okay. Well, uh, let us now look at uh, this uh, the key source texts that we shall be you know um, taking the help of 
as we talk about the critique of cultural studies and some of these are Chris Barker's The Sage Dictionary of Cultural Studies, Barker's Cultural Studies Theory and Practice, Frederick Jameson's Postmodernism, The Cultural Logic of Late Capitalism, Tony Bennett and John Frow's edited volume, The Sage Handbook of Cultural Analysis, Carrie Nelson and Dilip P. Gaunkar's edited volume, Disciplinarity and Dissent in Cultural Studies. You are acquainted with uh, many of these books. I think perhaps you are not, this is the first time you are bringing in Frederick Jameson's book and uh, this volume entitled Disciplinarity and Dissent in Cultural Studies. Well, let us now look at um, a quotation from the literary um, critic and poet T. S. Eliot and we are looking at a brief passage from notes towards the definition of culture. Now, you may be wondering why we are bringing in a literary person's work here, okay, um, when we are talking about cultural studies and theory. Um, this is uh, it is not, it is not the first time that, I'm, that, that one is talking about this, critics have pointed out to this um, extract in a bid really to show how culture, the study of culture okay, may in many eyes sort of, uh, they look at it and this is a very loaded term, right, the degeneration okay, of cultural studies into the trivial, into the ordinary though many would say that the ordinary and the everyday are certainly not trivial because cumulatively they give rise to our cultural practices. right? But first let us read what Eliot says and we shall see why this gives us you know the uh, some sort of a feeling of something trivial going on here because it is a critique or criticism of cultural studies. Now Eliot says in his essay, culture includes all the characteristic activities and interests of a people. Now, in the in here is he is talking about um, English culture and uh, the way it is uh, presented here, right? It has been sort of caught upon by uh, cultural critics. Okay, the, the you know the particularly the um, the, crit the critic those critics of cultural studies who see it as a domain that is increasingly trivializing its subject matter, right. So, culture includes all the characteristic activities and interests of a people, Derby Day, Henley Regatta, Cows, the 12th of August, a cup final, the pin table, the dartboard, uh, Wensleydale cheese boiled cabbage cut into sections, beetroot in vinegar, 19th century Gothic churches and the music of Elgar. In its very, you know, um, sort of inventory of you know, different aspects of British culture, okay, ranging from boiled cabbage to uh, 19th century Gothic churches, okay, uh, Eliot may not have really meant it um, quite tongue in cheek or as a sarcastic comment on British culture, right. He may, uh, may or may not have done it, but what I said just a while ago is this has been sort of seized upon by a critic or two to show that cultural studies as a domain in its insistence on um, you know everyday practices and so you know the so called micro areas of life um, has as a domain sort of trivialized itself. So, we will in this lecture then go on and look at uh, to look at some of uh, you know uh, some of uh, the other kinds of uh, criticisms that have been levied on cultural studies. Okay. Now, we will um, look at an essay by Arjun Appadurai entitled Diversity and Disciplinarity as Cultural Artifacts. Here in this essay generally speaking, Appadurai is not really give, offering a sharp criticism of cultural studies. In fact, he talks about the university and the discipline uh, cultural studies and the diversity therein from a more much more sophisticated uh, vantage point. But he here uh, these topics, uh, these uh, characteristics of cultural studies that have been given by him are not exactly his critique. He what he is doing here in this essay is telling us what people, the way people have looked at cultural studies and the way they have sort of assessed cultural studies right in a negative way. Some of the phrases and terms that have been used in 
uh, Apadurai's essay are these. For instance, he said, many, he says, many have found, please look at this slide, he says, many have uh, uh, sort of deemed cultural studies an overdetermined landscape of anxieties. Okay? Then he says, many have found the theoretical assumptions of cultural studies and, the, and also the theoretical practices of cultural studies to be largely derived from French theory, especially French post-structuralism. Right? Uh, then the topics were again too popular, right. Um, Apadurai says that many critics have found the topics to be uh, too popular if not populist. The style is again, you know, deemed to be too glitzy uh, for academic standards and where many have felt perhaps that, uh, you know, the style sort of um, lowers academic standards. Then they have, um, that the fact, the jargon is very hybrid. Right, the terminology. We, we remember we talked about the use of terminology and discursive writing in cultural studies. We had said that cultural studies being an area arena which is largely, you know, um, a redescription of things. If you remember the first lecture, which is a redescription of things in a bid to defamiliarize the already and always familiar. But many have found the jargon to be too hybrid, uh, which ultimately results in too many things perhaps being said about any topic. The politics of cultural studies is seen to be many by largely post-colonial in nature um, and finally, the multiculturalism that is advocated by many scholars of cultural studies is seen to be something that is rather uh, excess, you know, excessive in nature which he calls uh, hyper multiculturalism. Okay. So, what are some of the therefore, what are some of the you know uh, the criticisms and the negative comments on cultural studies that we have found through Arjun Apadurai's uh, sort of you know this is coll uh, collection of these uh, terms that have been given to us by many critics and these are a that uh, the theory is to you know the main one's points here are that the theory is too, um, uh, you know, too dependent on French structure, you know, structuralism and post-structuralism in particular and that the jargon used uh, is so hybrid that we do not, uh, you know, sort of it is difficult to contain it, cultural studies as a domain with a clear cut, uh, you know, uh, terminology and that the multiculturalism is uh, you know, too expansive, too hyper, too ex uh, excessive. So, um, we would then have to, even as we look at these, we would then have to either defend cultural studies, okay, from such um, sort of uh, almost accu accusations and we or we have to sort of revisit cultural studies, right, and to see that uh, is it really a fact that the style is too glitzy or that you know the jargon is uh, too varied and too hybrid for us to make ultimately make sense of it okay and there is too much uh, sort of linguistic gymnastics if you will okay so these are the things which you you know you and i can um, you know uh, look at in a positive light why in a positive light so that so that we can correct Okay, some of these faults, if at all they, these faults are there. Therefore, cultural studies is seen by many as trendy, right, almost fashionable academically, not truly scholarly, no, where no real research is done and because of the fact that it is, you know, it is a discipline that is so heterogeneous and remember in, uh, in the first lecture, we saw that it was you know called not only interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary and enterprise, it was also post disciplinary. So, by nature cultural studies is does not believe in being you know uh, within the confines or limits and limitations of any discourse or any uh, any one uh, discipline. It says that if you have to critique uh, culture, if you have to critique the use of power and the abuse of power okay, through discourse, through representation, then you of necessity would have to sort of break the disciplinary boundaries okay, because the attack has to be from so many sides. The attack has to be from uh, political economy, from um, race studies, from feminism 
okay, from sexuality, from all these. So, you have to sort of um, you know take the help of several disciplines and therefore, you do not by that logic have any uh, you know set uh, jargon uh, of your own and that is why it is bound to be a bit hybrid. So, these are some of you know the comments that have been made by people uh, and we shall see who are you know uh, who are uh, those scholars who have who who feel that these uh, cultural studies has suffered from such um, you know such bias or such you could say as they say lack of real depth uh, you know as far as research is concerned okay now if we look or if we zoom in to some of the kindred domains or if we look at those domains or disciplines that have from where the voices of criticism right against cultural studies are found uh, one is quite surprised to find that these are domains that are uh, very close to cultural studies okay these are domains and disciplines uh, that are kindred disciplines as we saw in our first lecture okay these disciplines are kindred disciplines um, as far as cultural studies is concerned and some of these at least the main ones are anthropology sociology literary theory and political economy particularly marxism okay um, these domains perhaps have felt okay a that many of their you know subject matters many of their themes many of their you know um, data sort of okay have been appropriated by cultural studies many would feel that many of their methodologies have been radically queried right by cultural studies for instance in our uh, lecture on science technology and uh, cultural studies we found that one of the reasons why cultural studies epistemologically speaking at least emerged was that it was it came about as you recall the phrase insurgent sociology okay that it was a sociology that um, you know um, took issue with many of the existing methodologies and particularly we saw took issue with the positivist school of thought okay um, literary theory as we shall see in a while was is also a field which is you know many would would even say that literary theory is cultural theory or that cultural theory is literary theory they are so enmeshed together that that many would uh, find it difficult to call it you know um, either a cultural theory or a literary theory okay and also because theory um, in literature the th uh, you know what the, the when you call the post structuralist turn or the linguistic turn in literary studies was deeply influenced obviously by post structuralism right and the political economy put the, the marxist uh, says have have another uh, you know point to make about cultural studies which we will be seeing uh, or looking at just in a while so what are the you know the four main domains or the chief domains that have from where we define the voices of criticism are uh, you know uh, quite uh, frequently coming from these are as we seen anthropology sociology literary theory okay and marxism now this um, this sort of unease of other disciplines right with cultural studies is uh, you know articulated so beautifully by stuart hall okay in uh, one of his essays then the essay is entitled the emergence of cultural studies and the crisis of the humanities and i shall read from um, you know hall's essay and we shall see how you know this critique began to come in uh, very quite early on really okay now let's uh, uh, let's look at what hall has to say on the day of the center for cultural studies at birmingham university's opening and you recall that we talked about the importance of the center for cultural studies uh, at the university of birmingham okay where really cultural studies as a discipline was um, established right so he says that on the day of the center's opening we received letters from the english department saying that they couldn't really welcome us they knew we were there, but they hoped we would keep out, look at this, hoped we would keep out of their way while they got on with the work they had to do. 
we received another rather sharper letter from the sociologist saying in effect we hope you don't think you are doing sociology because that's not what you are doing at all okay a very poignant input i should feel and let us let's read this very quickly once again this is stuart hall talking about you know um, a time when uh, even on the day of the opening of the center for cultural studies okay was marked by sort of dissent from other disciplines on the day of the center for cultural studies at birmingham university's opening we received letters from the english department saying that they couldn't really welcome us we knew we were there sorry they knew we were there but they hoped we would keep out of their way while they got on with the work they had to do we received another rather sharper letter from the sociologist saying in effect we hope you don't think you're doing sociology because that's not what you're doing at all now the surprising thing is you know since the day that day uh, of you know the day of the opening of the center and till today as we discuss these things okay these kind of dissenting voices these kind of you know uh, complaints so to speak from other disciplines okay continue to pour in right Uh, the the you know critique or rather the criticism from the literature stream okay from the domain of literature is articulated uh, again by Carrie Nelson in the essay entitled literature as cultural studies and i'm quoting from nelson let's see what nelson has to say about the complaint from uh, literature for literary studies cultural studies means giving up the hierarchizing cultural memory this is a very important word okay cultural memory that has dominated the field throughout the century the search for master works has to be replaced with an effort to understand literary texts as part of wider discursive formations okay so another reason for you know at least established and you know if i may use the word traditionalist uh, scholars from literature okay uh, it's in a liter uh, uh, a kind there was a kind of literary studies which has had a very long and strong history okay the the valorization of some works as canonical works okay and this word a cultural memory right so one has a memory of uh, you know one's culture cultural products what's cultural history one also has you know the moment you say english literature the, who comes to your mind okay you have immediately talk about chaucer you talk about um, talk about william shakespeare okay and you talk about william wordsworth etc right so these are the writers who have been canonized and they form a very powerful part of the cultural memory of literary scholars okay so now what happens is these literary scholars are being asked to look very sharply at these at their own cultural memory okay at least a memory cultural memory of the discipline they have been asked to uh, you know um, the the as the point has been made here the search for master works has to be now replaced with what replaced with with a very you know um a you know, uh, very sharp i said a very sharp revision okay of what counts as literature okay there are many uh, literary critics um, who today say that you know literary critics you know who have very strong connections or who are who are uh, totally in favor of a cultural studies discourse okay on or methodology they have also said that what is literature is something to be deeply queried perhaps they say that everything is a work of art okay everything is a, and again from the point of view of post structuralist theory everything is a text and every text whether it is a newspaper article or whether it, it is you know uh, a play by shakespeare like hamlet for instance both are texts and both have signifying practices both are encoded okay both are discursive formations and more than you know holding up a few pieces of work as high art or high literature and uh, talking about them incessantly is perhaps not uh, you know they feel not a 
very good thing to do when there is so much of inequality built into discursive formations, into representations, there is so much of ideology in the whole enterprise okay, of master works and of cultural memory. Right? So, obviously, we would find one section of literary scholars, um, you know, going through a going through a lot of unease as cultural studies comes in and sort of, you know, if I may use the word, sort of upsets, right, the whole apple cart of at least traditionalist literary studies. Okay. So, what happens, I would say, is that this to be fair to cultural studies and to def definitely to defend cultural studies, one would say that it is hard work. Right? It is hard work not only from the point of view of you know um, of doing hard academic work in the sense that looking at so many domains etcetera, it is hard work also to sort of uh, try to begin to remove what we may call the habits of mind, the patterns of mind. Okay? All these things like cultural memory, master works etcetera are part of you would say uh, the habits of mind okay? that try and have sort of uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of become used to talking about things in certain ways, okay, uh, till such till a time when it becomes, uh, you know, you are not even looking at the very discourse that you are using, okay. So, so a certain self reflexiveness or uh, self reflexivity perhaps is not welcomed by many because it is hard work in a different sense. Okay, it means as I said, okay, even critiquing yourself, your own uh, assumptions, your own cultural biases for instance, okay, um, you know uh, if you are a, a very well established professor for instance, you may not want at you know the height of your career to really uh, disown some of the earlier work that you ha have done which may seem to have a lot of uh, problems as far as um, you know. Uh, as far as uh, uh, issues of power and issues of politics are concerned. Okay? So, as I said it is not again only limited to literature really all disciplines then have had to, real, uh, to, to face the fact that cultural studies was sort of asking all, all these disciplines including as we saw sciences, science and technology to rethink and to begin to redescribe you know and to, and to be reflexive of some of uh, you know. Uh, their established ways of thinking and that is why I would feel as you know somebody who has also allowed herself okay, to uh, be queried by cultural studies, it is I have found that it, many may not find it very conducive okay, to established ways of thinking. Okay. So far what we have seen um, is you know the sort of the complaints okay, that have come from other disciplines and we also uh, looked at some of uh, you know the uh, labels so to speak some of you know um, the comments that have been made on cultural studies have been for instance too trendy or too glitzy etcetera etcetera. Okay. So, we are now going to look at another um, you know a sharp uh, criticism and critique of cultural studies in the sense that the textuality remember cultural studies again as we saw in the first or second lecture cultural studies sees every cultural artifact as a text. Okay. For instance, this very lecture that you know this very lecture that is going on now, this very video lecture that is going on, this virtual class that is going on is then a text for any cultural studies. In fact, after I complete this I may go back and watch this and analyze this as a text and try to you know tell you what is actually going on in this lecture, what are the things that I am foregrounding, what are the things that I am hiding for instance. Okay. So, when everything is a text then many feel that we may fall prey to a certain textualism where the text becomes an ism so to speak to see everything as uh, you know um, everything as a system of codes and being, being <coughs> sorry the elements or units in a text as being you know only uh, uh, as having meaning only as we saw in structuralism in relation to other units okay in contrast to other units in a in a text uh, all that is absolutely fine as we know that it is a it's part and parcel and it's one of the very important aspects of cultural studies now what some have felt is this word that textualism itself may become ultimately an ideology. 
Okay. Remember now what is ideology as we found in the lectures on ideology in the second module. Ideology may be defined as a way of looking at things. Okay. Ideology is defined as a world view, right? uh, what we may call a, a set of lenses by which you uh, look at the world, understand the world, judge the world and also on which your uh, the ideas on which your, your actions and decisions are based. right? So, when textualism becomes an ideology, then what happens is what we may look at this through the words of Frederick Jameson on his uh, you know uh, book on postmodernism. He says that textuality then becomes the intellectual expression of the cultural logic of late capitalism. Okay? He, he uh, ties it or he relates it to uh, capitalism or high capitalism or the latest stage of capitalism in saying that um, the, the purely textual way of, uh, uh, of looking at or of analyzing anything be it literature or be it any data in sociology or in the sciences okay, is uh, uh, ultimately only aids late capitalism or aids uh, the capitalist ethos. Okay. Why? The capitalist ethos does not um, does not encourage okay, the critique of its mode of production. Right? Now, what happens is if one gets too textual and one gets too semiological talking only about meaning production, uh, th that is fine talking about meaning production is fine, but if and when it is at the you know the expense of showing how those meaning production processes come about in the first place okay, because of a certain mode of production, remember the base and the superstructure, because of a certain arrangement in the economic base, because of you know certain relations of production that exist that are inequal, right, that, uh, that lead to inequality sorry, that are not uh, equal uh, that do not treat everyone as equal. Okay. In that sense what happens is uh, the, if you continue to do only textual criticism uh, the, again as I said uh, which is not backed up. Okay. If you have textual criticism, semiological criticism uh, talking about signifying practices and codes which is again uh, you know explained, okay, explained further by a political economy approach then that is the best way of doing cultural studies. But if you, if one harps on textuality all the time or you know if you write an essay where, where there is a even a beautiful textual analysis, but there is no sort of framework on which to put it or there is no showing uh, you know the, the whole process of power and politics and inequality that inheres okay, in the very text itself and in also inheres in, the, in how you decode the text, how meanings are produced and how you decode the text. Then of course, one has a right to say that, that this kind of criticism becomes only a sort of you know you will say a self indulgent kind of criticism, it becomes a matter of language of language games as we saw again in the first two lectures in the series of video lectures. Okay. So, um, many have taken this criticism very, uh, very seriously and as I had said again you know uh, the, the mixing of methodology, the textual methodology and in this uh, you know and the political economy approach is uh, one of uh, one of the most you know um, holistic approach you can have to cultural analysis. So, then again as I said I would bring in several critics uh, here and the way they have critiqued cultural studies and the next is from a book by, uh, entitled Millennium Dreams. Millennial Dreams is by Paul Smith and we are now going to read from Millennial just the one or two sentences from Millennial Dreams in order to think uh, in order to see how Paul Smith has articulated his critique. Now, Paul Smith says in the division of the economic, the civic and the cultural realms, cultural studies fails to grasp that the only object it can with validity propose as its own is the totality of social relations and cultural productions at given times and in given places. Okay. Let us read this again, cultural studies right, 
in in dividing the economic and or in separating the economic the civic and the cultural realms when it does it when it does it at all okay and of course perhaps there have been many uh, instances otherwise this kind of critique uh, ha would have not come about now what happens is in the separation again as i said a while earlier of the textual and the economic then uh, the civic and the and the cultural realms when these are separated then smith says cultural studies fails to grasp one thing that any enterprise it may undertake which is worth its while which has which would even have tremendous contribution to the understanding of culture and of power and politics in our society okay uh, is the as it says the totality of social relations and cultural productions at given times and given places okay so he says look at the word here i think this word is what we've been talking about just a while ago the totality of social relations you cannot break up cultural studies if you have to if you aim to make very important or aim to have very important findings okay of how culture works uh, if you can if you aim to give real real solid you know propositions on uh, trying to explain why we live the kind of lives that we live which i said in lecture 1 was one of the first questions that we must ask ourselves and one of the first questions uh, one of the things that culture studies tries to explain to us why do we live the kind of lives that we live then if we do not you know do not make it a holistic enterprise in and if you kind of cut it up cut it open too fine into too many segments then we lost when we lose sorry uh, we lose um the impact of our work okay so i i feel that all these again uh, let me reiterate all these criticisms are are very valuable criticism right if we find that cultural studies uh, has been guilty of all these and definitely it has to be corrected then he goes on paul smith and millennial dreams indeed without this kind of recognition cultural studies must be condemned Look at this word, condemned as exactly one more bourgeois form of knowledge production. Okay, so if cultural studies very unfortunately becomes, you know, in the end just another, uh, you know, uh, another reiteration of the capitalist ethos. Okay, it uh, becomes the sort of um, tool of. Uh, the bourgeois class has been mentioned here or tool if it becomes a tool really of of one class oppressing another then it is uh, one would say a tragedy that would happen right so without the recognition of culture studies as a discipline that it should it would its aim would have to be the totality of the social the relations among ourselves okay the social relations the relation between a person who is working in the field and the person who is in the industry the relation between uh, one who is teaching and one who is being taught these are potentially at least a uh, lopsided relationships where you know the power obviously is in the hands of or, or the one and not in the hands at all of the other in that case what happens is cultural studies is in the service okay of the capitalist ethos as remember uh, if you go back to our lectures adorno uh, and horkheimer have uh, has had shown in their uh, you know work on the culture industry okay so one has to be immensely careful as it reflects uh, let me read on as it reflects the divisions between the realms that it is the desperate effort of capitalist discourse to police okay so uh, capital it becomes part and parcel of capitalist discourse too much textualism okay only you know um, takes us away from very uh, you know very unequal conditions okay of life of social relations and that is something which is counterproductive to one of the aims of cultural studies and if you remember one of the aims of cultural studies is that we do not only analyze okay we make a difference okay we use our analysis to make a difference and to be, to and to work towards a better world in that case uh, if we continue uh, as paul smith has said if we continue to you know to segment the different areas of cultural studies then again it becomes uh, you know uh, too hybrid an area which ultimately is ineffectual okay then Uh, i would like to bring to you 
Another quotation from Stuart Hall and this time this, uh, this is from the essay, Signification, Representation, Ideology. Right? Hall too obviously being one of the most important practitioners of cultural studies, one of the most theor important theoreticians of cultural studies who has, uh, who has really in a sense taken it upon himself okay, in so many of his essays to answer you know uh, or to uh, you know to to uh, talk back to respond would be a more correct word to respond to these various um, very uh, very uh, as far as academics go goes really really serious allegations being made against cultural studies uh, hall says here social relations do exist we are born into them he says there is no denying the fact okay, social, we are born into social relations, right? they exist independently of our will, they are real in their structure and tendency. Social relations exist independent of mind, independent of thought, he says well there is no denying the fact that our social, we are born into social relationships, social relationships are part and parcel of our cultural life. Okay, they as Marx said remember we enter into relations of production recall go back to the lecture on Marxism uh, we uh, you know we enter man enters as Marx said man enters into relations of production that are independent of their will right. So, here also Hall says uh, the rela social relations exist independently of our will we are real in their structure and tendency they are real in their structure and tendency social relations exist independent of mind independent of thought. Then he says, okay, he says and yet this is immensely important and yet they can only be conceptualized in thought in the head. Now, we may say you know he, this, is, this is I would say a beautiful um, sort of uh, a beautiful way in which Hall is you know trying to defend cultural studies and you know, he says well when you begin to talk about this in the first place. Right? We begin to talk about these social relations, we begin to talk about all this happens in our minds, okay? we are creating them right? and in the process of creating them we are, con we are giving rise to certain concepts, we are using taking the help of certain tools okay? and these can be conceptualized only in the process of thought and these can be articulated and presented to the people in the form of language or in the form of other media which you know uh, talk about social relations which critique unequal social relations right. So, the dis if, if it is said that cultural studies is too discursive um, in that sense it cannot be nothing called too discursive because it is discourse is a part of cultural studies okay discourse cultural studies accept the fact okay and at the same time in order as you have seen in order to sort of uh, a balance out this in order to see that does not become too textual, cultural policy has come in very strongly where you know um, academicians are sort of encouraged and even exhorted by cultural studies to contribute to the formulations of cultural policy. Second again as I said this very anti positivist nature of cultural studies where it tries to uh, you know tries to bring to our um, you know to our understanding okay, the fact that knowledge is is provisional. Now, this is not simply a domain of cultural studies in philosophy too in epistemology and in, in some of the other areas we find that there has always been since Greek Greek time since Greek philosophy there is always been uh, you know an acceptance of the fact that knowledge is provisional, but knowledge works. Right. So, in being as I please look at this slide in being anti positivist and in in you know talking in uh, you know quite frequently about uncertainty, about provisionality, about discourse and indeterminacy and over determination. Okay. So, um, some of the very important um, foundational you know um, work done by cultural studies will always talk about these areas. Now, this is what brings in unease to people all this while we have been uh, said that whatever we have been taught whatever sort of um, you know uh, the important people in certain fields have traditionally taught us that these are uh, you know these are products of knowledge which are will, which will always stand the test of time etcetera. No, cultural studies and because cultural studies talks about over determination that 
phenomena including cultural phenomena uh, are determined by causes more than we can even think about okay and the indeterminacy right indeterminacy uh, and uh, the provisionality of all knowledge forms this is something that is hard to swallow by many people and hence some of the critiques to be fair to cultural studies some of the critiques and the critical voices from other other uh, fields and other areas particularly positivist areas therefore uh, are bound to come in but as scholars of cultural studies we have to also stand our ground okay if and and to say that it is cultural studies is not just a trendy subject okay when when it is fortified when uh, when it is fortified by a will to change the world when it is fortified by domains that you know um, methodologies that look very um, you know uh, sharply and critically in uh, uh, at existing unequal relationships in society then cultural studies cannot be just a fashionable or trendy enterprise okay it is quite baggy it is very in all it is um, in it encompasses a lot and therein and that is you know the quality of cultural studies uh, which should be harnessed by everyone okay therefore to end uh, you know this lecture on the critique of cultural studies and uh, now you could say even the critique of the critique of cultural studies we find as barker has shown us um, that there is therefore a triangular you know we may end by saying that uh, there is a triangular confrontation as he calls it okay because a there is a legacy of marxism with cultural studies okay which and when you move away from that legacy many are uh, sort of alarmed that things are getting too textual then there is the development of an anti reductionist strain within within cultural studies and there is of course the the ascendancy of post structuralism so that is why this confrontation is from you know three things coming together one is a uh, as as barker says one is a history of doing uh, of studying culture okay from a purely materialist and uh, uh, you know a very heavily political economy based um, uh, way of looking at cultural studies and with the coming in of post structuralism and the anti reductionist uh, say the anti positivist you know uh, strain what happens is you know the the hitherto the already established way of looking at culture is sort of alarmed at these new developments but in the end i would say my belief is that the judicious mixture you cannot you know uh, you cannot deny if you look very carefully at some of the important um, important formulations of post structuralism you cannot uh, you know deny the way or deny the importance of the way post structuralism has queried knowledge forms right but if it is sort of buttressed or if it is the fortified by you know uh, a materialist methodology when when the material real lives of people are not kind of pushed away from analysis then cultural studies i would say is one of the richest of domains in that it becomes almost difficult and that is why many perhaps wouldn't do cultural studies you know it becomes difficult because a it needs commitment and b it needs a self reflexive attitude in the scholar himself or herself as he or she from time to time takes stock of his or her own methodology and of doing cultural studies right so now we shall look at some of the questions for instance we may have a question like what are the ways in which cultural studies as a discipline okay has been critiqued then we would say that it has been seen as a trendy enterprise as something merely fashionable not having much scholarly value when and somewhere where no uh, you know a domain where no real research is done and not a discipline proper and we saw towards the end that it is not exactly a true or a very good picture of cultural studies because cultural studies has always had a legacy of political economy of marxism of the materialist approach okay it's only when it becomes too textual as we did uh, did admit and comes away from you know its um, commitment okay of helping cultural policy of you know uh, showing the underlying um, mode of production because of which such meanings come about such texts come about only then it runs the risk of becoming um, you know a shallow enterprise next we also found that uh, uncertainty provisionality discourse indeterminacy and over determination these are some of uh, you know the things that are not 
kind of with which many are not happy, but at then as we found in the end of our towards the end of our lecture that these are qualities that we have to hold on to. Okay. Otherwise, what happens is the reigning uh, knowledge forms become ideological and they sort of become naturalized. Right. So, it is very important to have a degree of provisionality uh, in our querying of knowledge. Then cultural studies is also some, some, somehow uh, sometimes called populist in the sense that again going with the trendy and fashionable labels. Okay. Uh, populist in the sense that uh, the it gives rise to, a, to an ideology where if you the, the reader or you know the audience is, is all paramount the audience cre can create as many meanings as we saw in the lectures on media etcetera. Then audience resistance creates a consumer sovereignty. Okay. Therein again there is a problem of giving too much power to the reader, the consumer and the audience. Then through post structuralist theory, it is also seen as a mere language game. Uh, it is seen as too semiotic where there are you know the there is too much play sorry play of meanings and it is it is seen as many as too speculative an enterprise. Then name the related domains that have been critical of cultural studies and this I think is easy for you to remember. Uh, these the related domain some of these at least the most important of these are anthropology, sociology, literary theory, political economy particularly Marxism. These have uh, are surprisingly kindred domains and these are the domains whose sort of boundaries have been you know most threatened by cultural studies. Okay. So, we also saw through Carrie Nelson uh, finally, that for if you look at literary studies in particular, okay, what cultural studies has done is force literary studies to take a new you know, to relook at issues like cultural memory, the canon, okay, the master works and have uh, sort of has uh, cultural studies has sort of impelled many to look at you know uh, their own work and the work of the masters as simply discursive formations, ways of speaking in certain times and certain places. right? And I would like to end on this positive note. Again, as I said, you know, there are you will be surprised, and if I can talk, I'm talk and also say this for myself. Okay, there are many from literary studies that have moved into cultural studies, and uh, some of us, us who have done so have not, of course, given up literature. But when we adopt and we recognize the importance of cultural studies methodologies, essentially, I think what we are doing is understanding that all works are but discursive formations. All works may be objectively looked at and analyzed, um, you know, uh, by cultural studies without turning these works into uh, works into, in as far as literature is concerned, without turning these works into fetishes. Okay, without turning them into commodities that remember we look at uh, commodity fetishism through Marx in one of the lectures in this module. Okay, the text then become literary text becomes the master work becomes a fetish and where you know increasingly if it remains a fetish you would not want to really look at it as a discursive formation. So, there are some bold steps to be taken at the same time we are also to look or listen very carefully at the critical voices that are coming on from other areas and the critique that is the you know the uncovering of the foundational assumptions of cultural studies. All these must go on even as we move on with cultural studies. Thank you so much.